Hey guys, welcome to PT Dance Videos and Body Peak Supplements. Today we're going to be talking about amino acids. There are 20 total different types of amino acids found in human beings. Out of those 20 amino acids, you have two different types, essential and non-essential. The difference between the two is that essential amino acids mean that it's essential for you to eat it in your diet. This means that it's not naturally produced by the human body. Non-essential amino acids mean you don't need to eat them because they are naturally produced by the human body in the human body. Now let's have a talk about numbers. There are eight different types of essential amino acids which leaves 12 different types of non-essential amino acids. Again, this is 20 in total. Now let's have a little chat about essential amino acids. These are the type of amino acids that can't be produced by your body and therefore you need to eat them. There are a whole range of different types and they all range from organizing your increase in insulin to muscle absorption through to hair, skin and nails. They are your building blocks of the human body. Now, there are different types of what we call branch chain amino acids. Branch chain amino acids are three specific types of amino acids and these branch chain amino acids are a type of essential amino acid, which means that these branch chain amino acids need to be consumed by the human body, needs to be eaten. The three main types are isoleucine, leucine and valine. So, Isoleucine, leucine, and valine. Now, out of the three types, leucine for bodybuilders is the most important. Leucine helps uh, hemoglobin increase in your blood, very similar to valine. It increases your metabolism. It boosts your body's ability to rebuild muscle tissue and repair muscle tissue. It also increases insulin, increasing absorption of carbohydrates and protein into the cells. Now, leucine can't be absorbed into your body without the presence of isoleucine and valine. Therefore, research was done recently, or actually a long time ago now, um, on these three different types of amino acids and the best ratio to be consumed. And we found that leucine can't be absorbed very well into your cells without the presence of isoleucine and valine. Therefore, the three work together very well. Leucine um, has been put into supplements in a two-part form with isoleucine and valine in a one-part form. Therefore, the ratio is what we call a 2-1-1 ratio, where we have two parts of, iso of, two parts of leucine to every one part of isoleucine and valine. Uh, these ratios have recently been upgraded. So if you look at the old formulas such as Extend um, and some of these other amino acids from um, Optimum Nutrition, they're all done on a 2-1-1 formula. But somebody recently has thought to themselves, what happens if we increase the amount of leucine in this formula? Is there still enough isoleucine and valine in that 1-1 format to increase the absorption of the, of the leucine if we take it up to a 411, 611, and they took it all the way up to 811. So, my current favorite uh, amino acids, uh, branch chain amino acids, um, come from supplements such as Modern BCA and uh, Body Sciences uh, Intrabol. So, sorry, Amino Bowl. So, these are, the, these are the products I like the best because they're 811 ratio, which means four times the amount of leucine than most products that you find on the market. Um, so this is a good way to find if you've got a good protein, because what protein is, such as your whey protein, is a group name of amino acids. So when you drink protein, protein goes into your stomach, gets broken down into peptides. Those peptides are groups of amino acids put together. Those peptides now break down into individual amino acids and your body absorbs the amino acids. So what counts in a really good protein, apart from its ability to be absorbed in your body and whether you choose or choose not to have lactose, such as a whey protein concentrate versus isolate, but one of the best ways to judge a really good quality protein in a sense of recovery and growth 
is how much of these amino acids is actually in that protein. So don't necessarily go for a product that's high in protein. Find a product that's high in amino acids per serve, especially leucine. Now, what's the difference between taking your protein versus branch chain amino acids in its raw format? Well, when you train, all the blood goes away from your stomach to your skeletal muscle tissue, which means your digestive system shuts down. Because your digestive system shuts down, you can't drink protein during your workout when your body needs it the most. And this is where drinking your branch chain amino acids comes into play and has its advantage. Drinking branch chain amino acids with it water in your workout allows your body to receive these amino acids when it needs it the most and this is during your workout. So drinking branch chain amino acids is important because it prevents catabolism uh, and can burn fat loss. It can increase fat loss. So let's talk about catabolism. Basically what happens is when you are training the primary fuel source in, in your body which is stored muscle glycogen uh, as well as glucagon in your liver and glycogen glucose in your blood um, gets burnt within six to eight minutes. Once it's all burnt out of your blood, your body now switches from a sugar burning metabolism or a carbohydrate burning metabolism to a fat burning metabolism. And when your body goes to a fat burning metabolism, uh, you start to break down fat as its primary fuel source. But there's a problem. The problem is that your fat cells can't break down at a fast enough speed to supply your body with adequate amounts of fuel. So what happens is your body needs to look for a second fuel source. And this is where it starts to look for muscle tissue. Your liver through evolution has learned and designed to be able to deteriorate your muscle tissue and convert that deteriorated muscle tissue into a usable fuel source. And this is what we call a catabolic phase or when your body is becoming catabolic or catabolism. This is where you're not in a position to regrow muscle tissue but your muscle tissue is actually atrophying through deterioration. A classic example of this will be a marathon runner. Uh, this is why a marathon runner, when they're on their run, um, look so skinny, not because they have no body fat, but because they have no body fat and muscle tissue. So what we need to do is uh, urge our marathon runners and bodybuilders, of course, more important than that, to drink BCAs during your workout. This is going to preserve your muscle tissue. Now the other thing BCAs can do during your workout is help burn body fat. Uh, when leucine, uh, lysoleucine and valine are present in the bloodstream, they need to be absorbed into your cells, so your body naturally produces insulin. That's right, insulin. So body can produce insulin without the presence of sugar. So when insulin is produced, uh, the cells are now open, so your body can not only absorb the BCAs and nutrients, but sugar as well, uh, quickly dropping sugar levels during your workout, forcing your body to burn fat. Now you're going to preserve your muscle tissue in this case because you've got a high presence of amino acids. So another thing amino acids can do is actually trick your body into believing uh, that it needs to deteriorate muscle tissue. So let me expand a little further on this because I didn't explain it very well. Um, your body can't break down fat at a fast enough speed to supply your adequate amounts of fuel, so it needs to break down muscle tissue. We spoke about that earlier. So when this whole process is going on, your muscle goes, okay, I can't break down fat fast enough. I need another fuel source. I need to break down muscle tissue. And just before it grabs your muscle tissue, it realizes, oh, there's already amino acids in your blood. So instead of going for the amino acids out of your muscle tissue, it takes the amino acids in your blood that you put in there with your supplements and your body uses that and converts that into fuel instead. So drinking branch chain amino acids can actually be used as a fuel source uh, during your workout as well. So they can do multiple things. Um, so why not just drink your amino acids uh, well, it's, it's, and not have protein at all? Uh, well, there's a lot of other things that come into play. So during your workout, you do need amino acids to help regenerate your organs, etc. So um, all the amino acids, the branch chain amino acids, are just there to rebuild muscle tissue. They've got nothing to do with your health. So straight after your workout, have your whey protein, which has all 20 amino acids in there. And that will not only help rebuild your muscle tissue, but regenerate your organs, get rid of stress hormones like cortisol and all the other things that come as a byproduct of training hard. So what I suggest everybody do is um, either have your whey protein, whey protein before your workout and after your workout and have your branch chain amino acid smack bang in the middle or if you are going to um, 
have a pre-training supplement, then remove your whey protein pre-training, uh, put the pre-training supplement in, uh, but definitely have your BCAs during your workout, and then have your protein ASAP after your workout. Uh, when you drink your breast chain amino acids, be sure to mix it with water and nothing else. And if you want to add one scoop of carbohydrates in there, you are more than welcome if you're going through a bulking phase or just have your BCAs by itself during a workout um, if you are going through a cutting phase. So try that in your next workout. Talk to you soon.